You're not thinking big enough. Your life will never get better or bigger than your best thought, than your highest thinking. You won't exceed it. And essentially it creates a ceiling on your life. You'll learn everything about a human being. If you were to turn the volume off, stop listening to them. Even if you're wondering something as simple as, how is someone really feeling? Are they okay? Most people tell you, I'm okay, don't worry about me, I'm fine. But if we just turned the volume off and watched them like a silent movie, are they really okay? Are they really fine? We learn everything we need to learn. We would with you too. If we took the last four weeks of your life and there was a private camera on you when nobody was watching you thought, we turned all the volume off of here's my new resolutions, here's my goals, here's my outcomes, here's what I'm gonna do. We turned all the sound off. You were being real. Would success say, oh, you're heading my way? Or would success say, I don't recognize you? You've got to start to allow yourself and give yourself the gift of thinking bigger. And so many of you tell me, well, I'm experiencing pressure. I feel pressure. Please listen to me on this. Pressure is all ego. The truth is, you're feeling pressure only because you've made it about you and not about them. And I know that's hard to accept, but it is ego. And the more you can remove your ego from the situation, pressure minimizes. Now, you say, well, Ed, it's gotta mean something to me. Yes, it does. That's why we practice. Allow your ego to drive you to prepare. Allow your ego to drive you to have big goals and ambitions and dreams. Allow it to drive that big thinking and those big actions. Allow it to drive you, that's okay. But in the moments of execution, separate from the outcome and execute. So what it comes down to, what I'm saying to you is, what are you doing? And that doing is dictated by your biggest and best thoughts. Just ask yourself in any situation, how could this be bigger? The bigger you think, the more you begin to think like winners. If success was watching you with that video camera right now, would it say, oh, she's coming my way. He's coming my way. Or would they say, I don't recognize you? Because it's gonna come down to what are you truly doing when the camera isn't on you? So hey guys, are you frustrated with where you're at right now? Maybe stunted in your progress? Well, if you are, I wanna recommend a place for you to go called Growth Day. Growthday.com forward slash ed. It is the number one personal development app on the planet. It's got all kinds of high performance techniques in there, courses, accountability, journaling, live speeches from some of the top influencers in the world, including me. It's an overall environment to change your life. Growthday.com forward slash ed. Hey guys, I'm so excited to tell you this right now. Here's the deal. There's a chance now for you to be on this show with me, and I'm going to do it every single month. Let me tell you how you qualify to get on the show. Every single day on my social media, I run something called a two-minute drill. So if that's Instagram or Facebook or TikTok, if you follow me on those platforms, when I make a post within the first two minutes, so have your notifications turned on, if you just make a comment on my post, every day we take everybody who's made a comment and we pick a winner every single day, and that person is going to have an opportunity to be on this show with me and get coached. So if you're interested, Follow me on social media. When I make a post, make a comment, and eventually, hopefully, you can get selected to win. We're picking somebody every single day, and I'll have those folks on the program. If you want to get a text reminder about my post or this program, 714-916-9144. You can text me at that number, and you'll get daily reminders. I would love to have you on this show. Follow me on social media and engage in the two-minute drill. Max out. All right, welcome back to the show, everybody. So today's episode is going to be epic. And I'm going to start out by quoting somebody named Epictetus, who's a Greek philosopher. And here's what he said. Not worry about anything outside of your control. The only things you can command are your thoughts and actions. We choose our response. Stop aspiring to be anyone other than your own best self. For that does fall within your control. And I start out quoting that today for this epic podcast because so many people of you have asked me this last few weeks, Ed, would you do something on truly changing your life? Like, give me a key on changing and shifting my life. What's an invisible thing maybe I'm not doing that I need to be doing, something I'm missing? And I can tell you right now that I know what it is for most people because I know what it was for me for decades. And here's what it is. You're not thinking big enough. Stay with me on this. You are not thinking big enough. And because you don't think big enough, it constricts and limits everything around you. For decades on end, I was what I would call a realistic thinker. And then I read a book called The Magic of Thinking Big by Schwartz. And it changed my life because I realized that if you're going to think, you might as well think big. 
and big thinking changes everything. One, it opens up your entire mind to the possibilities that you were oblivious to before you thought the bigger thought. Remember this, this is important. Your life will never get better or bigger than your best thought, than your highest thinking. You won't exceed it. It essentially it creates a ceiling on your life. And for years and years and years, I thought it was smart to kind of be realistic and pragmatic in my life. And, and there is some benefit to doing that so that you're not just pie in the sky and Pollyanna all the time. But it's such a limiting thing. Most of us in our lives are limited by our small and realistic thinking because the people around us have got us to conform that way. And so conformity is actually, to, in my case, I believe when you conform, it's the ultimate form of cowardice. Conformity is cowardice. You conform to the thinking of everybody around you or what conventional wisdom is of what's possible. But if you think about all the people that you admire in your life, they're not conformists, they're big thinkers. Even if it's someone who's done simple in their life, it's a big thought in life to decide that you're going to live a simple life. That's contrarian. That's not conforming to today's culture. But so many of us are limited. You're not going to ever exceed in your life your biggest and best thought. You won't exceed your thinking. And I have to tell you that I, I was so limited for years because I was a realistic thinker. And I want you to change this. I, you know, John 3.18 tells us, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and truth. So let me start out by today saying this. I did a podcast a while ago where I said, I want to observe people. I'm trying to figure out who's really going to work hard, who really loves me. Who's, and the way you do this in life is you have to stop listening to people. You have to turn the volume down on people and watch them like one of these old black and white silent movies. You'll learn everything about a human being if you were to turn the volume off. Stop listening to them. People have learned in life to use words to manipulate other people. They've also learned to use words as a mask. So even if you're wondering something as simple as, how is someone really feeling? Are they okay? Most people tell you, I'm okay, don't worry about me, I'm fine. But if you turned that volume off and you watched them, are they really okay? Are they really fine? That relationship you're in, I love you so much, I'll do anything for you, you're my everything. Turn the volume off on that completely and then watch them. How have they behaved? How have they treated you? Do they go out of their way to put you first or make you a priority? Or do they just say they do that? We're so romanticized, aren't we, on words in this culture? How about the person that's working for you? I'm so fired up. I'll do anything for this company. I'm going to go all the way to the top. I'm going to do something awesome. But then they don't get there early. They show up late. They don't exceed expectations. They don't outwork everybody. But we want to believe them, and so we listen to the words. But if we just turned the volume off and watched them like a silent movie, we learn everything we need to learn. Now, here's the rub. We would with you, too. And so if success was your boss, if success was where you were heading, if we took the last four weeks of your life and there was a private camera on you when nobody was watching, you thought, and we turned all the volume off of, here's my new resolutions, here's my goals, here's my outcomes, here's what I'm going to do. We turned all the sound off, and you were being real. And this camera was watching you at 9.30 on a Wednesday morning, 3.15 on Friday afternoon, right? 6.15 a.m., what your routine and habits are, what you were really doing during those times. Would success say, oh, you're heading my way? Or would success say, I don't recognize you? I want you to ask yourself that. Turn the volume off now on you. And if there's a video camera watching you regularly, are you doing all the things that are required to hit your goals and your outcomes? Because in life, you're not always going to get your goals. You're always going to get your standards. Our standards are what we do when nobody's watching. This is really important. Let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and truth. That's not just true in love. Let us have success without words or speech, but with actions in truth. I say this to you for me this year as I evaluate my year. I've got to start to think bigger because that thinking is the cap on my life and that thinking is driven by my belief system. And so I've got to think bigger thoughts so that I'll do, why does this matter by the way? When you're thinking big thoughts, you vibrate at a much higher frequency than someone that thinks small. See, small thinking, realistic thinking. See. 
I had Benjamin Hardy on my show and we were talking about 10xing things in your life. And he actually said, Ed, I think 10xing a business, 10xing your wealth, 10xing your happiness is actually easier than 2xing it. Because at 2x, when you just want to double something or improve it, there's a hundred different options. But when you want to 10x something, there's only one or two things you know you would have to do, big things you would have to do to move the needle in that direction. So to some extent, if you're going to do the work, you might as well go 10x something than 2x it because the options are more limited and you know exactly what you need to do to do it, don't you? This is true, by the way. If you're going to think, you might as well think big. I had a mentor earlier in my career. He goes, Ed, dreaming is free, so dream big. It doesn't cost you anything to dream a big dream as opposed to a small dream. One of the things I tell my teams all the time, I'm always saying to them, let's get in the big. Let's get in the big, the big frame first, the big picture. Not enough people have built the muscle of being in the big. They're good at strategy. They're good at details. But how good are you in the big as you're on your walk or your run right now or you're watching this on your YouTube? How good are you truly at building the muscle of big, of thinking big thoughts? Because not only are you limited by your biggest thought, but big thinkers vibrate at a high frequency and they begin to attract people, places, and things into their life because they vibrate at a higher frequency than someone who thinks small. This small thinking is limiting your, your activity, limiting your vibrational frequency, your attractiveness level. It's limited your ambition. And this is something that our culture has conditioned us to do is to be realistic. It's get in your seat. Be a good boy. Be a good girl. The people you admire the most in life, no matter who they are of what they've done, we all know this to be true. Let's just be real. They were big thinkers. In fact, in the book, The Power of One More, I have a lot of quotes in here. And one of most of you know, but one of my heroes is Martin Luther King Jr. I wrote my dissertation on him. I want to read something to you about this building the gap between what we say and what we actually do and your thinking. I'm full of quotes today. Here's Martin Luther King. Listen to this. One of the great tragedies of life is that men seldom bridge the gulf between practice and profession, between doing and saying. Wow. A persistent schizophrenia leaves so many of us tragically divided against ourselves. On the one hand, we proudly profess certain sublime and noble principles, but on the other hand, we sadly practice the very antithesis of these principles. How often are our lives characterized by a high blood pressure of creeds and an anemia of deeds? <laughs> we talk eloquently about our commitment to the principles of Christianity, yet our lives are saturated with the practices of paganism. We proclaim our devotion to democracy, but we sadly practice the very opposite of the democratic creed. We talk passionately about peace, and at the same time, we assiduously prepare for war. We make our fervent plans for the high road of justice, and then we tread unflinchingly the low road of injustice. This strange dichotomy, this agonizing gulf between the ought and the is, represents the tragic theme of man's earthly pilgrimage. Wow. And so if we turned the volume down and we started to watch you, what would happen? If we really got in your head, how big are you thinking about your relationship and how amazing it could be and the things you could do and where you could go? Because it'll never get there. You will never exceed it if you don't think it or dream it. Your business, your wealth, your body, you're limited by your biggest thought. You must extend it. You must expand it. And remember this. Write this down. Extremity expands capacity. So, hey, guys, as you know, I've partnered up with my good friend, Brennan Bruchard, who's created the greatest personal development system that has ever been designed called Growth Day. If you go to growthday.com forward slash ed, you can get all the information. But it's that time of year where everybody's trying to form new habits. They've got new resolutions and goals. And you need an environment and you need some coaches and you need to be able to do it super inexpensively. And that's where growthday.com forward slash ed comes in. There's everything from journaling to accountability programs, live messages every Monday from myself and other influencers. There's an opportunity for you to, to get courses that would cost thousands of dollars completely for free. It's incredible. Go to growthday.com forward slash ed and check it out. When you do something to an extreme, you expand your capacity to do it. So when you begin to think big, you expand your capacity to think big, and this begins to open up a whole new world and paradigm of the way you look at life and the world. Right now, you're limited by whether or not you've thought this way before. You're limited by how you've thought previously. 
So, for example, I had John Maxwell. John's been on my show three times, the great thought leader, leadership expert. And he said to me, Ed, he's in his 70s now, I'm growing more now than I've ever grown in my life. And I remember when he first said it, I said, that's nice. We've all heard somebody who's a little bit older than us say, hey, I'm growing more than I've ever grown. And I'm like, really? You're growing more than you did when you were eight years old to 15? Come on. You're growing more from t than you did at 25 to 30 or 40 to... And he goes, no, 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 Ed, I am growing more. And he said, the reason is that I've grown, I've, I've grown so much over the years and pressed this muscle so much bigger that my capacity to grow is greater than it's ever been in my life in my 70s. And I said back to him at the time, I said, John, that's because extremity expands capacity. And so if you begin to ex expand your thinking, it changes, that extremity changes your capacity to think bigger about other things as you move forward. Uh, consequently, your behaviors and thoughts and actions change. This is such a critical thing for you to understand because when people get around you, they've got to get this sense that you're doing something great. When people get around you, does their energy shift? Do they feel something from you? You're always making people feel something. Are you making them feel that it's average and ordinary and realistic? Or when they get around you, can my, my life might change if I get around that lady. My life might change if I'm around that guy. Man, my life will be better around them. I'll be happier, more successful, richer, fitter, more faithful. Do they sense any of this when they're around you? And that's got everything to do with your thoughts and your actions at the same time. Another great quote right now from Gandhi. Here's what Gandhi said about this. I'm going deep today. I've got Greek philosophers. I've got the Bible. I got Martin Luther King. Now I'm throwing Gandhi at you. I mean, this is my A game today. Here's what Gandhi said. Your beliefs become your thoughts. Your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. Actions become your habits. Your habits become your values. Your values become your destiny. Mark Twain, you want to hear something from Mark Twain? Here you go. Actions speak louder than words, but not nearly as often. So what it comes down to, what I'm saying to you is, what are you doing, right? And that doing is dictated by your biggest and best thoughts. Just ask yourself in any situation, how could this be bigger? How could this be bigger? I have to get in the big, get in the big, get in the big. You can fill the details in as you go. But when you're walking to me, how can this be a better meeting? How can this be a better workout? How can this be a bigger profit center for us? How can this be a bigger funnel? This a bigger post. The bigger you think, the more you begin to think like winners. If success was watching you with that video camera right now, would it say, oh, she's coming my way. He's coming my way. Or would they say, I don't recognize you? Because it's going to come down to what are you truly doing when the camera isn't on you, when you're not around other people. Because here's the truth. I don't listen to anybody anymore. I've had so many people let me down. I've had so many people tell me they were going to do something they didn't do. Heck, I don't even listen to me all the time anymore. Here's the truth. Probably like you, I've told myself I was going to do a lot of things in my life that I didn't do. And when things started to change for me was what it wasn't just my words, but man, my thoughts got bigger and my actions got bigger. And I felt good about that steps I was taking in my life that I knew other people weren't willing to take. I've sold myself on a principle that I want to resell you on today, that if I'm willing to do things other people aren't, I'm going to have things they won't. And here's the truth. There's a price you're going to pay for your dreams. And I think oftentimes we spend so much of our time sort of negotiating this price. I've said this before. But the price you will pay for not achieving your dreams is infinitely greater than the price you will pay for achieving them. See, I'm willing to go at the end of my life if I don't hit all my big goals and dreams. That's going to be okay with me. But I'm not going to get to the end of my life and go, man, I wish I would have thought bigger. I wish I would have given myself the gift of dreaming a big life with big emotions and big happiness and amazing relationships and incredible contribution and achievements and big, bold, amazing memories. I don't want to be cheated because of the limiting thinking in my mind. And I'm sure not going to get to the end of this life where I'm not tired. I'm going to ride this till the wheels come off. You are not going to outwork me. You are not going to out-effort me. I'm not going to get to the end of my life and go, I didn't deserve it. I didn't get it because I didn't work for it. I'm not going to have that happen. Now, if I work for it and I think big and I still don't get there, I can live with that. And here's the other thing I won't do. I'm not going to chase somebody else's dream. 
if I'm going to miss, I'm going to miss on my dream. If I'm going to miss, I'm going to miss on my life. If I'm going to miss, I'm going to miss on my big thoughts because I only got one ride here and so do you. I want to challenge you this week. And the reason I put this podcast out in the first place this week is you've got to start to think bigger. You've got to start to allow yourself and give yourself the gift of thinking bigger. And so many of you tell me, well, I'm experiencing pressure. I feel pressure. What do I do about all this pressure I'm feeling? Listen to me on pressure, okay? Please listen to me on this. Pressure is all ego. When you're feeling pressure, I got to walk up and I got to give this speech. The truth is you're feeling pressure only because you've made it about you and not about them. You go, no, that's not true. Yes, it is. You're worried. The pressure is, what are they going to think about me? How are they going to feel about me when this is over? When you go into a sales call and you're feeling pressure, the truth of the matter is that's your ego because you're not just so observed with helping this person and being completely selfless. You're worried about the result. Well, what are they going to think about me? What's going to happen to me if I don't get the sale? What are people back at the office going to think if I'm not closing? What are they going to think of me if I do close it and I'm number one? And you have all these thoughts. Athletes who are up at the plate and they've got to get a hit and they feel pressure. They go into a fight and they feel pressure. They go, no, man, it's the competition. No, it's the pressure. You're worried if you lose what people are going to think about you. You're worried if you win what they're going to think about you. You're worried if you win what it's going to mean to you. You go, no, I'm worried about what it means to my family. Not exactly. You're worried about what your family is going to think about you if you can provide for them. You're worried about what they're going to think about you if you can't. And so anytime you're feeling pressure, it's ego. And I know that's hard to accept, but it is ego. And the more you can remove your ego from the situation, pressure minimizes. Because now you're not worried about what it matters to you, what your legacy is, what the history is, what people are going to think or feel about you. Imagine if you went into everything you had, and this isn't easy to do, not worried about what it means to you, not worried about whether it affects your legacy or history, not worried about how other people are going to feel, what other people are going to think or any of those kind of things. What if you had the absence of any of those thoughts? You'd have no pressure. Now, you say, well, Ed, it's got to mean something to me. Yes, it does. That's why we practice. We allow it to mean something to us. But in the moment of execution of any goal, you separate from the outcome. You train and train and train and train and think big and act big all through your life because that's what you do to prepare. But when you're in the moment of hitting the putt, the moment of hitting the shot, the moment of giving the speech, the moment of closing the deal, the moment of being with your loved one, you separate from outcome and you're just fully present and enjoy the moment with no ego. Allow your ego to drive you to prepare. Allow your ego to drive you to have big goals and ambitions and dreams. Allow it to drive that big thinking and those big actions. Allow it to drive you, that's okay. But in the moments of execution, separate from the outcome and execute. And when you separate from the outcome and you're not worried about what it means to you, what it'll mean to the people around you, what people will think about you or how it will feel or other people will feel about you, you can be fully present and allow your preparation to guide you in the moment of execution. And these are the things you do to change your life. A, you start vibrating at a higher frequency and you begin to think bigger. B, you don't talk as much and you do more because actions speak louder than words, right? And if you watch yourself with the silent movie off and success or bliss was your boss, you'll know right now whether you're heading in the right direction. Obviously, reducing pressure matters as well. And the way we reduce pressure is we allow those things to prepare us. But at the moment of the speech, the moment of the meeting, the moment of the close, the moment of that, uh, that time with your family or friends, you separate that moment of that athletic move you've got to make to win. You separate from outcome and you're fully present with no ego in the moment. These are the things we do to change our lives. This is why I do the podcast. So I'm hoping this week helped you. I, man, I gave you quotes from Mark Twain, Gandhi, a Greek philosopher, and uh, the Bible, all in one podcast in about 25 minutes. That's my A game today, guys. Hope today helped you very much. If it did, make sure you can find me uh, on Instagram, at Ed Milet, and, uh, and that you share this podcast with the people that you care about every single week. We're changing people's lives. We're the fastest growing show in the world for a reason. Also, by the way, if you want more help on personal development or things like that, you can go to growthday.com forward slash Ed. Uh, that's Brendan Burchard's app. He's got all kinds of great tools in there, and I speak in there on a regular basis and train in there as well. 
And I just want to tell you, you belong in your dreams. The reason I did this episode today is these dreams you have, they are not some joke God's playing on you. It's not a hallucination of you. Your dreams are a preview of what's possible in your life if you'll do the things that I talked about today. They're little previews, little glimpses of what's possible for you in your life if you'll step into this version of you and expand your capacity. All right, everybody, God bless you. Max out your life.